All right, good evening, and welcome back to the shop for Shop Night Live right here in Canterbury, New Hampshire. It's winter, and the nights are, well, the days are short. The nights are long, so we need to brighten things up a little bit. So tonight I'm going to show you how to make a wood glow candle holder. Now this is something new I've been experimenting with, but I've wanted to do this for a long time because I love the, the quality of light you can get through a piece of veneer. And that's what we're going to get into. Now you might be saying, hey, what happened to the tea light idea from last week? Well, here it is. <laughs> How do you like that? This was a piece of scrap. And I did a sample little hole with the tea light. So I even lit the candle for you. How's that? Can All right. Hold it, hold it a little still and tip it to, to me. Well, it's nothing really. It's just a okay. joke. <laughs> Everything is something. She thinks this is something. Okay. I was just kidding. <laughs> I, I steered away from the tea light idea because, as I mentioned last week, you need a special size force in a bit for the lights that you have. Um, this one measures like an inch and a half. So you could go inch and nine sixteenths. Or as someone acutely mentioned last week, I didn't mention it, but I did measure, you could use a 40 millimeter um, fortune bit as well. It's, it would be actually a little tighter fit on these tea lights. But get your tea lights before you get your fortune bit because you may end up short. Now I'm going to do something on that at some point. But because I didn't have the bit, I wanted to go in this direction where it's more translucent. And we actually see the light through the wood material, which to me has a lot more interesting potential. Um, but we're just going to scratch the surface tonight with a very simple kind of example that you could make. I mean, you could make numerous uh, candles like this in one day. It'd be awesome gifts. Uh, and we'll talk more about how you could use them. But hey, if you like this content, please go ahead and subscribe. And I forgot to mention that last week, but so many of you subscribed. I really appreciate that. <laughs> it helps us. And uh, we, we love to um, have more people involved. Um, but regardless, whenever I do this, I'm actually just thinking of one person. The camera lady, of course. <laughs> <laughs> no. Anyway, uh, so tonight I'm going to get into bowl of popcorn it. for you tonight. <laughs> what? Maybe more popcorn for you. Of course, you make your own, so that doesn't really mean anything. <laughs> That's right. I got to cut down on that popcorn after the event. It's it's just I'm just not sleeping well. I don't know. It's not good. All right, check this out. This is a, a lamp that was made in season one of classic woodworking. Yes, there was only one season. So <laughs> but there might be some news on the horizon about that. But anyway, it's fun to say season one because this one. Ooh. <laughs> See, I made this, this with, uh, if some of you saw that episode, it was with Chris Bexford. It was a great thrill and a lot of fun to have him here. He's an awesome guy and uh, very pragmatic, uh, but excellent woodworker. And, and it, was, it was great to work with him. And we put together this kind of um, tenon, wedge tenons coming through the base. It's just built to this simple cherry frame. And then you have these little uh, bridle joints at the top with a cross lap in the middle. And you can actually read about how this is made from uh, Fine Woodworking issue number 222. And um, he also has a different style lamp in that issue as well. It's kind of round. So check this out. I mean, look at this. Let your mind wander and dream of the potential you could make with this kind of idea of light, like filtering through. I mean, look how warm that is. It has like an Asian quality. It's, it's tall, it's unusual, it's contemporary. But what I want to feature tonight mainly is that effect of making a kind of lamp or light, or in our case tonight, a candle 
holder that, that utilizes this translucent potential or property of wood if it's sawn thin enough. So that I'm going to set aside and we're going to launch into our, our little... We should mention too, if, if you happen to want to watch that episode, I can't remember which one it is, but if you're a member of the um, Unlimited membership at, at Fine Woodworking, you can see those episodes on their website yeah. in full. I think that was episode 12, if I'm remembering right. You can see the teasers if you're not a member, but you can watch the whole thing. Yeah. <clears throat> so my idea is to wrap a candle like this with veneer. Now, you're probably saying, well, that's a dumb idea. <laughs> that jar is full of wax. That's true. Very observant. This would not make a good candle. <laughs> because if you wrap it, you're only going to get that tiny little, it's going to be really dark down here. So you need to start out with some type of glass that's clear. Um, if you have one of those type Yankee candles or whatever, that's really low burned down, you could use that too. You know, you could use it at some point. But if you have it clear, you're going to get more of the rich warmth through the whole cylinder. And that's what we're looking for. You could use one this height, this height. And you'll notice in the, uh, I always forget what they call them, notes. It's not the notes. Description below. The, the description, that little downward pointing frame. arrow. You just hit that. We've added a couple links um, that I found on Amazon that look really good. So I went to, uh, I went to uh, Walmart to try to find something that was just like a hurricane cylinder um, that had no bottom to it. But um, they were cleaned up, so I couldn't show you that. So we found these in the cabinet. Well, I didn't find them. Someone else found them. <laughs> Someone else who knows where things are. But um, anyway, they were cleared out, so I just wanted to show you this. And in thinking about it more, and looking online, I found really an ideal cylinder for this. Um, they have these centerpiece glasses on uh, Amazon. And you can buy a dozen of them for about 28 bucks. Okay, so it figures out about well, 250 a piece. Well, those at, at Walmart were going to sell for $4 a piece. So if you're going to make a, a bunch of them, it's, it's a cool idea because they are awesome. Well, we'll get to it later, but you'll notice they will make nice centerpieces, like individual centerpieces at tables if you're having a, a reception or a, a gathering, like we're having so many of those these days. You're going to need to get ready. <laughs> I think there's going to be such a desire to gather again. You're going to be ready with your centerpieces. <laughs> and everyone's going to say, wow, you're really on the ball. All right, so, so cool. anyway, well... That's the cylinder idea, but you can look in the notes of that. We also have uh, a compatible candle to those cylinders in there. And the ones that I did specify in there have a glass bottom to them. So you put your candle in, and you don't have to worry about wax going anywhere. And you can always reuse it uh, over and over again. But here's what we want to do. We want to take a veneer and actually wrap our cylinder so that when we light the candle we're seeing some light come out the top but we're getting that really warm glow out through the glass side and um, using that same principle as the Bexford lamp now this one you could use as well we just need a shorter piece now you notice when I did that test piece here this this could work if you didn't mind seeing some glass Ideally, you'll have veneer that's wide enough to go right up to the rim. If it can be just below the rim, I think that looks pretty sweet. Just like that, you know. So this is how wide this veneer came, and that's all we got. In fact, this is the same veneer that we used on the Bexford lamp. And Chris was so interested in wood um, of all kinds. He actually wrote a book. He studied... Uh, uh, forestry, like in, uh, in college, I think. And so 
He wrote a book on all different woods. And when he saw this wood, he went, wow, look at, look at all that bees wing in there. Because this is really dead quarter sawn hard maple. And when you quarter saw, which means just cutting perpendicularly across the growth rings, so all the growth rings would have been oriented vertically on the sheet. You get this really spectacular little tiny woven, I don't know that you're going to be able to see it. It's kind of hard to see. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. I'll move it just a little bit so you can see. And that stuff gets iridescent and very, very nice. Now you notice this, this is hard maple and this is actually from the same flitch that this was made out of. And look at the difference in color. This was not stained. That's just what happens to maple over time. It gets that warmer amber color to it, which just enhances the quality of light. So don't, you can just finish this natural and we'll, we'll talk about that more. But I want to talk a little bit about wood selection and what to get you started. So you're going to use some veneer and it's really accessible. You can go online to companies like Certainly Wood, I think Berkshire Veneers is still in business. Does somebody, if someone knows if they're in business, go ahead and uh, chat in. But certainly wood is certainly a good <laughs> option. And uh, the cool thing now with veneer is that you can go online and you can look at the exact flitches and the exact veneer that's in stock in order right from that bundle. So there's no surprises, like you get to see exactly what you wanted. So if you wanted quarter sawn hard maple like this, just look in the maple and then you'll see in the listings, some of it quartered. And usually if the higher price for quartered, like two different flitches that are both quartered, you're gonna know that has more spectacular beeswing figure. It's just more intense, All right? So that's a good option. Now, another, I'm just going to show you some different veneers and we'll just talk about a few of them. Um, this is walnut and I don't think this would make a good lampshade. It's too dark, obviously, and I don't know, I'm going to put this light behind it. Can you see? Can you see <laughs> really? that? No, I mean you can see it. What? Can you see it? Just what you're seeing. You know, okay. So. It's very fibrous and it's open grain. So you see little speckles of light coming through. So I would advise not using an open grain wood like walnut. And also, obviously, this is just too dark. I think the lighter colored woods lend themselves much more to this technique. And you're going to get a better, warmer quality of light. All right, so here's, here's a piece of ash quartered and when it's this intense can you see how good that is this is they usually call it fiddleback when it's so fine and look at that wow that's pretty that glows pretty nice and this is interesting because i would have thought not to use this and i haven't done the light test yet because ash is a very porous wood that's why it dries so quickly and it's got an open grain and see those bright lines that's those are the pores and i don't think this would be bad actually this would be kind of cool because you would have a striping kind of effect if we put this in here and you'll get a really interesting effect i like that all right i wasn't thinking that would work check this out this is uh bird's eye maple uh now this might work it feels pretty oh my gosh look at that that's crazy so those little bird's eyes are actually brighter with the light they're oh, that's cool they're like little knots wow so what i love about this is you always are used to seeing bird's eye in one just as material as wood with finish on it but here we're seeing it what happens with light behind it, and it's a whole nother effect. So let's check that out in the jar. So that gives you a kind of a sense of what it'll look like as a candle. Um, 
I'll just do a couple others. Uh, we won't go. It's like a lava lamp. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is um, beech. I won't do any more. So, so beech is a closed grain wood. All right. So see how there's no like bright speckles? That would be the pores or the holes in the, in the wood. Beech is a really nice closed grain wood. Wow. That's, that would be very warm and a little darker, obviously. Here's some fiddleback maple, soft maple, quartered. Mm. Look at that. Wow, that's awesome too. So you could get the fiddleback effect. That would really look like your lava lamp. And I'm not sure what would happen with teak. This is getting into the darker woods again. Yeah, see, you got the pores. That's not very good. Not a lot of potential there. And lastly, cherry. It could be, but it's still pretty dark. And, I'm sorry, lastly, I have this Douglas fir quartered. I wanted to show that because it's a softer wood. Wow, that would actually maybe work. That's pretty nice. All right, so that gives you some ideas, and you can reflect back. The first uh, one you did that was dark was walnut, right? And yeah. Thought it was a little dark, yeah. Yeah, Steve it was, was asking about walnut, but it, it did look a little dark. It's a little dark and it's open grain. It's not as exciting. Like, I think I would go with the, the ash because of how that looked. I mean, that has really cool, like, linear pattern with the open pores. And that gives me a lot. I was thinking the maple was the end all, you know, but it's not. I didn't, uh, I was seeing that for the first time with you. So, anyway. Um, I'm going to use maple tonight. Now, what I discovered is when you use a candle instead of a bright light or a light bulb, like in this case, you don't get the translucence as much as you want. So if I can show you with this sample, here's a piece of store-bought veneer. This is just how it comes, and it's about... 20 thousandths of an inch thick, or 1 42nd of an inch. Um, let's see. Are you sure? I don't know. I'm starting to think about it. Well, don't ask me to verify. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always second guessing myself. All right, hold. Check that out. That's pretty nice, right? But with just a candlelight, now I'll sh I can't really show you yet. It doesn't, it looks too dark. It's, it doesn't really show. So what I realized was we had to get this thinner. We had to get up to like half the thickness. So I sanded it to 10 thousandths. This piece is almost 10 thousandths of an inch. Check it out. Here's my little meter, if you don't believe me. Look. Hey, would you mind turning off that light if you don't need oh, it? Oh, I'm sorry. it's a little bright. Thanks. So check this out. We got our little micrometer here. Let me get the we'll setter to zero. All right. And then we'll come on to that piece. So we're just a little under 20, actually. Well, 20. Okay, so we'll call it 20. This one I sanded. And it's it, you can hear it. And let's check that out. Aha. Uh -huh. We're half the thickness just about. I don't want to put my hand in the way <laughs> at 10. All right. So let's look at it with the light behind it and see what kind of difference we got here. You didn't make any of those veneers. You bought them, right? Right. It's not worth making them. I mean, I don't think. So here's the light behind it. And you can see how how much thinner this side is. You can actually see a brighter translucence to it. So the one way you can check it is you can actually wrap it around your glass. I won't do it right now, but you could wrap it around whatever you're using and put a little spring clamp on there and light a candle and check it out. And if you're not getting enough light, you're going to have to sand it. So let me just show you a quick uh, sanding technique 
that won't that will serve you well here. Um, here's a piece of the same bees wing quarter saw and hard maple. I'm going to set it down and here's the key. You got to tape it to the table. All right. If you try to sand this by hand or with an orbital and it's not held taut, it will crack or buckle on you and it's a nightmare. So that's the main key here is just tape it well at each end. Now you're going to cut a piece that's over length and just really get it taped down there. Some masking tape here. Make sure you mention what grit you're going to use if you would please. Yes. I was just thinking that. All right, so I started out, the first time I started, I uh, started with 150. And I used this, uh, I was using this Festool Orbital. And I went over it with 150, probably four or five passes. And then I went to 220. And it got, by doing both sides like that, I got down to 15 thousandths of an inch. It still wasn't enough. So I did another one, started with 80 grit, and then went to 150, and then went to 220. And that's how I got to the 10 thousandths with the same number of steps. Uh, well, actually, it was the one more with the 80. But I don't, you don't spend long on this. And that won't work. That method won't work with all materials. It depends a lot on the hardness of the wood. Even though it's veneer, it still has the exact same properties as the lumber the board. So hard maple is tougher and you don't have to worry as much about going through it. So it was easy to sand. I'm just going to do a little here and show you. The key is to try not to spend too much time. I realized that I spent too much time on the ends and wore through a little more. Here we go. So, whoa. So that's all I uh, all I did there, and then I would finish sand with the the grits. I would start with like 220 at the end, and because it's held taut, I don't have to worry about it buckling. But I've tried to sand uh, this type of stuff before and just hold one end, and no matter what I do, I end up buckling it because I get caught up so that's the key here it's so thin and then you're getting down it's like really it's just like two and a half pieces of tape thick by the time you get to ten thousands Tom could you use the drum sander I was thinking that I don't think so because at some point I have sanded really thin on a drum sander, and as you get the, uh, as you crank it down lower and lower, the drum starts hitting the feed uh, sandpaper because that has like some play in it, and then you're sanding your feed roller. And so, and also, there's the delicateness of it. You know, when it starts to feed, it, the drum is going the other way, and it's just going to want to explode it. I had thought like if I had a long enough piece and I started it and then or taped it to a board like had it on another board that had been sanded tape it at one end and then get it close and as you start in just crank it so it starts in and it's already held at the front I somebody can try that and see if you get success but I don't think you can do that when you get this thin it's just too fragile with a power tool like that. Um, but anyway, once, once you've got it sanded, then you're ready to go.
and you can check it with the light. Um, this one I think is still a little heavy. I think this was my first experiment. Let's just do a quick check on this. I think the steel is bending. I actually set this up on my on a table saw or something. So you've got this is just a piece of sheet metal. I don't know if this is gonna work. Alright, that's close enough. I think this is alright, so this is about 15. This is the one I think that I did the first experiment and it wasn't thin enough. So I would go a little more with that. But I do have a piece that's at 10 ready to go. And <laughs> is this little guy here. So, and you'll, you'll, you'll find that it may be a little thinner in some areas, but that's okay because it's going to be, look like a natural light anyway. So I'm going to just, because this is short, it's about the right height for this kind of jar. You could actually do a jar like this, why not? I mean, just stop at the appropriate height. I do think it's a little nicer to have the cylinder though and go right to the top. So I'm going to just get my square. A scraper's probably a too much, Tom, or, or? A scraper? Too. Um, you could try it, but you've got to make sure, you know, you're pulling. I would try any method. <laughs> I have not, obviously, this is a new thing, so I'm working this out, but it doesn't take long to sand it when you start with a heavier grit. you just got to be uh, careful not to go through it. So I'm just going to use my surgical scalpel here and make a cut. Just get a square cut and that'll be my start. And now I want to get the length I need. So you don't quite get as much sanding at the end so I wanted to cut some of that off. I want this a little more translucent. I'm going to get in a little more I have more waste there, so I'll cut a little more off to get to the thinner stock here. The end I had taped too much, I think. All right, there we go. That's good. Okay. And bring it right around. And now I can take a pencil. And I'm just going to mark that little overlap, just about, just about like a quarter or a half inch, or I'll just go right, let's say, right there. Okay. Now you could try to do this dead, but but I think it's better just to slightly overlap. It makes a simpler job. Yes, you're going to have a darker seam there, but it's just like a lamp, um, where you have one part of the shade off and has the overlap. And you put that toward the person you least like at the table. Oh. <laughs> All right. There are no such persons. <laughs> oh, no. That never happens. All right. I'm, gonna <laughs> I'm going to hold this fast. and it's Certainly not something you announce on a video. I know. If anybody's over at our house and I don't even think about it, oh, and I put the thing we, in the gun. We don't go. do that, friends. That's not so. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> I, I was just kidding. I know. Someone will notice, though, and go, oh, I got the overlap side. We'll put it towards ourselves. How about that? What's that mean? All right, so <laughs> now I'm going to bring this around and... And I don't want this to crack. It's really thin. So that outer edge, I'm afraid, like when I'm going to glue that, it could possibly fracture and crack along the edge. So as a little reinforcement, I'll just put a piece of masking tape, like it's so often done with veneer. If you want to protect an end from fracturing, like a lot of times you'll get veneer, like some of those pieces, those sample pieces were sent that way with the ends of veneer are taped and it acts as a good reinforcement. So I'm just going to cut this off. There we go. And now that'll be the outside for this job. Okay, so I'm all marked out. I'm ready to go. 
It's that simple. <laughs> but wait, there's more. No, so that's all I'm going to do. Right like that, I'm going to come around and hit it right there. So I'll just put some glue on that taped edge, and I don't need much. I just want a thin line, and I'll get my snazzy little glue bottle. There we go. <laughs> what? Snazzy. Yeah, dollar store Let's special. See how long they last. They've been great. Everybody likes them. Yeah. Everyone who sees them and tries them. All right, so just a little thin line like that. Doesn't take much glue, and I'm going to spread this out a little bit. So I want to get it right to the end, though. So when we overlap, we get a nice tight seam. Okay, that's about it. That's all you need. All right, so I'm just using, I'm using Type Bond 3. It is the most heat resistant, but I don't think heat's really in a factor here. Oh, I forgot one thing. That glue's okay. It's also the most open time glue. I don't want to leave it like that for too long, though. I should have got my tape pieces ready before, but I'll just put some here because I won't be able to handle the tape roller. I'll have both hands here. All right, so we're going to bring it around. Let's do it like we practiced. And I want to get this tight, so I'm holding this. I'm going to just kind of pull it around and get it overlapped there. And I'm aligned nicely on the bottom. I can always um, sand this after a little bit. But that looks pretty good right there. All right. Now, you'll probably get used to which way you should go. I should have gone around the other way. It would have been easier for me. But I'm going to just hold it there. Put a piece of tape while I'm holding it here. And I want to pull right across and get that tight. There we go. Oops. And another one. This, the tape is actually your clamp here. So get that nice and tight there. Let's do it I'm going to get the green tape. I think I can get a better. Mm -hmm. Whoa. <laughs> Everybody will love that. Smash. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to get to the top here. Now that it's held with the other ones, I'm going to pull across. And really crank that down. I don't think I need to roll it. But there, you're seeing a little squeeze out. That's a tighter seam there. I'll go to the bottom. Same thing. Let's slide it up a little. The bottom rounds under a bit on this one. Okay, you're suggesting maybe some rubber bands. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of creative ways you could do this. Um, you could shrink wrap, but I'm trying to make sure that I'm pulling down the seam because it wants to, you know, there's not a huge overlap there. I think if you make, if I made a little more, the first one I did, I had a little more overlap and uh, it was easier to pull it down because it's kind of riding up on the underside piece there. Would you uh, recommend steaming it at all? Before you? I don't think so. It's so thin, it's so flexible when you get it down to ten thousandths that it's super easy. I'll show you the one I did um, earlier in a minute. You'll see. So once you get it like that, you could even go over it again if you wanted to get a better pull, you know. <laughs> Dean's suggesting the vacuum press necessary. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Dean, that's a brilliant. And we're going to pull it down. Dana's asking if you've ever tried electrical tape. 
I have not. But that has stretchy. This, I'm using the green because it's very strong and it has a stretch factor. See that? Yeah, he was mentioning that value. Super strong. Too. Yeah, this actually is um, really excellent tape for clamping stuff. As people who've taken a class here know. This is the automotive tape, right? Yeah. So that feels pretty snug and tight down. And after it's done, I can't obviously take this one out, but you would just sand that seam. Now, you get some tape on your hand. that looks pretty nice though, huh? Now to finish it, once it's done, I would just pull the tape and you can sand lightly and soften the seam. If you have a little glue there, you can just lightly take a chisel and pop off any beads of glue along there and then sand the seam down without obviously cutting through so it's softer. And um, I can't really show you how it looks, but you can see the nice tight line on the inside. And for this one, you'd want a candle probably that would be up about this high. This might be a little too tall for it, but you can use... <coughs> So I wouldn't use a tea light. Um, you could, but they're going to be so low. I think it's better to have a candle that's got the flame about mid-height of your cylinder. It seems to be the way. This one's a little high right now, but these, these burn down. These are about 10 to 15 hour candles. I also listed in the, show, the, the notes <coughs> a... Uh, a box of candles that are squatty like this that are about three inches high that would work great in those glass cylinders that are also listed there. So I think you could have, I forget what the price was, but they, they weren't that much. Um, but they were about 16 hour candles, so pretty good amount of time. You're not concerned that veneer is going to slip off, huh? Slip off? Because it's not glued to the no, that's a great question because initially I thought I'm going to need to glue this all around and that was overthinking it because I actually had a little experiment where I got some epoxy and I wanted to put it like under the seam. I was going to say, oh, maybe I should use epoxy and first epoxy the first part to the glass. Then, you know, and so I, that's epoxy there. And I wanted some material that epoxy wouldn't stick to. So I did this little test. And I've got packing tape here. And this is just five-minute epoxy, like J-Weld. And look, the epoxy does not stick to it. So you can use that as a backer when you don't want epoxy to stick. This is wax paper with the face side up. This is also said to be non-sticky to epoxy and look at that it just comes right off but you saw what it does to wood it's frozen on there so that's a good idea if you want to go with epoxy but getting back to your question no it doesn't slip in fact when you it's quite easy to pull it around you saw how, how I did that I just pushed over and both hands came together and that's tight on there like I can't even slip it off so it's really snug I'm, I'm quite surprised with my first experiment of that. In fact, I, I pushed it up there a little bit, and I can barely move it back to the bottom. But that's where I want it to sit, right like that. So let's take a quick look with a candle. This might be too tall. I think the flame's going to be coming out the top. But let's, let's spark her up, see what happens. Did you, I'm not sure if this is CA glue... California glue? Would that be? Someone's asking if you tried. CA. No, that's not California. That's no. cyanoa acrylate. Whatever. That's like super glue. Um, no, you could use that. You could use something that's faster. If, but I don't. Um, I've only used that in a few cases. I want to experiment more with that because there are a lot of cases where it works well. All right, this is not working because. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that a great I candle? See a candle in there. <laughs> <laughs> and we kind of need the lights off, but um, to really see it glow, let's put it 
Yeah, I asked that question too, Larry. He asked, what about the veneer burning from the hot jar? It doesn't get hot. The, all the heat is going up up there. And you've got the glass layer. Oh, you wouldn't believe how it's glowing right now. I, it's, no. Actually, that's not working well because the flame's too high. Dean's suggesting resawing the candle. Resawing. Cut it, cutting down. <laughs> That's a great idea, Dean. <laughs> Actually, I, you got the idea. I think those gl other glasses are six inches tall, so they're actually perfect um, for this size candle to start out with. But I've got this one that I did a little earlier, and this is almost as high as those, almost the same dimension as those other six-inch cylinders. Um, they're three and a half inches across, that I specified, and this is just over. This is almost three and five eighths. So they're just slightly thinner, and they're a little taller. This one is only a little five and a half. So they would be awesome for this wow, here. That's pretty. Now this, I, I finished it after. So there's the seam. That's not obtrusive. And I sanded it nicely. And then I sprayed it with some shellac. You can just use canned shellac like this and spray a good coat on there and see how it's shiny? That's one coat. In fact, that's, this is exactly what we used on the Bexford lamp. Just bullseye shellac, clear. And it will amber up by itself, not because of the shellac, but because of the amber color in the hard maple. All right, so that was sprayed. And this is actually a Yankee candle that burned way down. So I'm going to light this up. This will give us a better candle effect. This actually has two wicks down in there, which will help as well. You notice on the, uh, you can see the glow on the um, thumbnail. thumbnail. Yeah, for the video. So this looks much better when you don't have a bright light aimed at it. But you can kind of see, let's put it in a little darker space. All right, so you're getting the glow factor through. Now this light is way down here, so, and there's wax down here too. So if you have a clearer cylinder and you have one of those other candles, the light will be right about there and the whole thing will glow. And like I said, when you should experiment dry, like just put a little spring clamp or something. This is not a little spring clamp, but you would just spring clamp it dry on there and then um, light the candle and see if you're getting, if your veneer is thin enough to be translucent for the warm light. But trust me, in a, in a darker room, we're pretty bright in here right now, this has such a sweet glow to it and it makes a big difference on a tabletop. You know, it's kind of got that little romance factor going in there too. And uh, you know, for a quiet candlelit dinner, instead of the big candles like in your face, you get that nice warm amber glow down there. So there's a lot of possibilities for this. As you saw with the veneer, you can have a lot of fun. Uh, they might even be able to send you a sample pack. Um, not sure what Certainly Wood does but, you know, if you go back and look through that list, if some of those struck you, some of those are really awesome veneers. Make sure you've got them wide enough so you can get around in one shot. And you could be the talk of the party when, when it comes out, when people can get together again. <laughs> we can't turn the shop light off, right? Because then we'd have to turn it back on. And that We could. Why not? Um, and we while you're at it, do you have a tea, tea candle that you can put in that little... One you made? Yeah, I do. Um, it's being it's, suggested. To try the it. wick is so short, I don't think it's going to be very bright. Tea light, I should say. What did and, I do? And that somebody, uh, oh, here it is. Birch bark is being suggested as opaque and nice. Yeah, if you could get it thin enough, that's definitely a uh, something you could try. He says he's used it, so. Oh, cool. See, I've got a very tiny wick on there. I don't think it's going to give much flame, so uh, it's not going to be a true representation of a tea lamp. 
<laughs> look at that. <laughs> look at tiny little light. Kind of sad. It's a sad light. All right. Let your light shine. I'm going to turn the lights off for a second. You might want to turn the light off on the... The camera's light. I think you just hold and push the button. There you go. Wow, that's nice. Let's turn all the lights off. Ready? Oh. <laughs> it's like Halloween. <laughs> but actually, imagine those along a walkway and people walking up. That'd be sweet. Yeah. So that's the idea. And that's using wood. We're, we don't get out much. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Pretty easy to please excitement around here. It's like, I'm so excited. Hey, it beats the brown bag method, right, with the candle. And that's, that's pretty creative, too. But these are going to be, these are really special, like, made things. And it, you can, it is a woodworking project, technically, that you could bang out. You see how fast you could make those. Cut them all out, get your glasses, and you'd be ready to go. They make wonderful gifts, too. Yeah. You could bring it over to the, well, I keep saying that, but there are no <laughs> holiday parties like there were. All right, so we've got that. I'm going to just let that go a little bit. Hopefully this video will be being watched later in life, and that will all be yeah. back in order. Yeah, um, right. Right, we're at, a, we're at an unprecedented time. Dana's we're, suggesting we all have that to you stick could together. Uh, laser etch veneer ah. that is that thin and get maybe a nice image on it that would... That's true. That would be awesome. It would be tricky um, because of the grain. If you had like points and stuff, they would want to stick out. There you'd probably have to really uh, laminate it, glue it down on the, on the surface. So one thing I haven't tried is um, spray adhesive to see if that would work. But it is getting warmer, but it's not hot. So maybe it does... But I have two candles in there, so they're kind of near the side. Yeah, Michelle had the idea that I, I mentioned to you this morning about cutting out. I said something different, but she said cutting out stars and yeah. making some veneer shape. It'd be interesting because the, the, the fibers of the wood, once you do that, they're going to want to stick out. So you would have to, you'd have to put some kind of adhesive on the whole thing. So I haven't worked that out yet. That's another wood one. Wood burning tool, Rick is suggesting. Yeah, burning. Yeah, there's all That's kinds of creative ideas. Potential. Everybody's all right, well. Smart. That's the candle. <laughs> what did I call that? The wood, wood glow. glow candle. Uh, the last thing I want to do tonight is just show you the finalized cradle from last week. A number of you were excited about that. And I, stay right here. I'm going to bring it over. Okay. I'm actually going to do an unveiling. We're pretty excited about how it came out. I think I'm going to get this candle out of the way. And here it is. The, what do I call it? White cedar? Whatever it is. I think that's what it is. Your light's not on anymore if you want to know. Oh, thank you. And. Wait, give me a second here. There you go. So I'm not rocking. Okay. I don't think it makes a difference. That's good. But maybe it does. Ooh. Oh, wow. wow. Now, look at that, huh? Now, we checked it out. I actually leveled the bench because we want to make sure this sat level. The bench is tilted a little bit. But then, to simulate a baby, we put a uh, <laughs> gallon of glue in there. <laughs> And then, and then look at this. The rockers, we were wondering, there was some question about that severity of the curve on the rockers. Would it be too tipsy? And look at, you could just roll, hit it with your foot, and you get this nice kind of soft rocking for the um, passenger. <laughs> <laughs> some of this. That's sweet. 
close here. I'll tell you a few pointers about it. Um, all we got on there for finish is right now there's two coats of clear shellac on there. And what was really wonderful about it is the color. The color of this wood, this hurricane of 38 wood, is so golden and warm. It's just beautiful. And what it's light. It's soft wood, so it's light like white pine is. And if we had built it out of white pine, as the original was, it's a little tricky to stain it and to get it this color. But this had it inherently in it. And it does darken with time. So these sides have been done longer. And this will the roof will darken up too. Let me show you the roof. Check that out. Look at that beautiful quarter sawn material there. And the back. And then you can see all those dovetails really start to pop when it's done. And the base, as we said last week, is made out of cherry. So there's more weight on the bottom here with this cherry assembly. And it's 7 eighths thick. It's really nice and hard and it's more durable. And we put a series of screws down through and centered that so it was right on the level point. And even if the, even if it got really crazy and rocked over, you can see how these little knobs on the end of the feet act as a stop right before you would capsize. <laughs> it's not too far to the ground. <laughs> that little crumb cruncher would um, find out the hard way not to do that. Actually, I think by the time they can get mobile to do that, they're in another container. <laughs> right? Yeah. So. One of the things that we really loved about it was the way these handholds turned out. Just using that little sweet detail, that little, you know, they could have just been oval shaped. But to shape them down like that, it gives you a much better handhold. And it's nicely balanced. It's tilt slightly to the head. But when there's a baby in there, I think it's going to be dead on. And then that little cut down, almost to make it heart shaped. Now this has two coats of shellac on it, and you see how it's kind of glossy? You don't want to leave it like that whenever you use shellac on a piece like this, unless you really like that look. To me, it's too shiny. It's too, it's not, it's not fun. So what we would always do at Pugs um, is hit it with fine steel wool. So four-rot steel wool. Now let's just look at this spot right here. Are you getting a glare here, a shiny? No, not too bad, no. I just want to see where it's shiny to you. Is it shiny here? Where are you seeing shine? On the, on the end grain there. Right here? Yeah. Okay, so I'm just going to burnish that with the fine steel wool. So this whole thing will be kind of hit like that. And it looks like, you're probably saying, wow, now it looks really dull. Well, only for a second, because then when you put a little polish on it, it'll bring it back. But instead of having that hard, gloss, chintzy shine, it gets what I call like a soft gloss. So let's get that. All right. So there we go. All right. So can you see the difference between this shine right here? Are you seeing the shine right there? Mm -hmm. How bright and hard that is, harsh. This has a soft, mellow kind of gloss, all right? That's the beauty of shellac. I mean, this is two coats sprayed on. And I'm going to talk a lot more about um, shellac next month, a special um, presentation on shellac. And you don't want to miss that. that where we'll get into this and how easy and how beautiful and rich that finish is without much work. And it's a classic all-time finish. And if you haven't been using it, I think you'll be hooked on it. If you did this in oil varnish, it'd take forever. You'd be wiping it on, sand it between coats, wipe on another one. I mean, this is two coats and I spray them out by two hours. 
And the last coat went on at about 6 o'clock. So it's that dry where you could sand it and it'd be powdery already. Might go one more coat, but it's child safe and it's super warm and protective and traditional. Perfect for a classic piece like this. It's beautiful. I don't know. Almost I don't makes think you want to have another child. <laughs> yes. For a one ten second moment. I think a grandchild would be yeah. uh, more appropriate. So I got feedback. I didn't get feel like a lot of people wanted to build one of these. That's okay. But you know, I did get some really sweet stories from some people who talked about having built one for their daughter um, when they when they had their first child, mm -hmm. and then they they gave it to their daughter. Their daughter actually used it as uh, to put her dolls in when she was a little girl, and it stayed in the bedroom. And then they gave it to her. And then she had a daughter. And now she's watching her daughter use it. And so they're seeing their grandchild in the same cradle that their daughter was in. So these can have like a heritage and history and um, such a warm kind of history to it, family. So it's a sweet piece. There's a lot of work to these things. Don't let it fool you. <laughs> and um, we got some nice... The dovetails are really an awesome element to it, but really pleased with how it turned out, and it was a great experience to build it. Now, I didn't get a feedback that a lot of people want it, so we probably won't be doing this immediately, but um, maybe someday, if there's enough clamor, <laughs> if we have more people, if there's a wider audience, there'll probably be a higher percentage that way. So that's it for tonight we've got our let your light shine um warm glow mm -hmm. candle <laughs> that was my new i can't wood glow wood glow candle yeah okay and um i don't think you'll be signing that project. no because it's a gift from for somebody else right what you won't be signing the cradle um i made it with a friend local so i think we'll both sign it just for fun that's cool that's the plan anyway so any other questions we can <laughs> camp, well camp saying we might have a baby boom soon yeah that's true camp i did read about <laughs> that this, this week yeah, that's right we gotta get ready for that <laughs> all right everybody thank you so much for being part of this remember if you like this content um we're gonna be all over the Place. We've, I've got so many great projects planned for the new year. We're going to step it up and do some more exciting, uh, complex things. Um, this project we're doing with Fine Woodworking right now, the Shaker Dresser, we're having a blast. We just shot earlier um, on Tuesday a couple more of those episodes. So we'll put a link to that as well. Um, that first it's, um, episode? episode, I guess you'd call them, mm -hmm. is up. Um, on Fine Woodworking site, and um, they're going to be releasing that. And I think it's, you're going to really love it. And we're going to actually have full-size plants available for that shaker dresser uh, in the very near future. So as you see it come out, if you want to make it and you want the full-size plants just like I use, um, then you can get those here. All right. So thanks again. So for being here. Remember to subscribe. It's really easy. Just hit that button. And also join our mailing list, which you can also find in our descriptions there. Yeah, on epicwoodworking.com. Thanks again for hanging out with us here in the shop in Canterbury. We look forward to seeing you next time, right back here on Shop Night Live. <laughs> Good night. Rest easy. <laughs> we should close with a cradle song or something. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Have a great night.